When I was eight years old, I came here to the National Space Center in Leicester, where I learned that if you were colorblind, you couldn't become an astronaut. Since then, I've never been truly happy. One in 200 women and one in 12 men are colorblind. 330 million people worldwide. But red, orange and green are still the universal colors for stop and go, charging and finished, bathroom vacant or bathroom engaged. You will almost certainly know someone who is colorblind, even if they don't. People with mild cases can live for years without realizing. They get told off at school for coloring the sky purple and then go their entire lives assuming they're just thick but there's really no need. Colour blindness is hereditary. By knowing your genes and your parents, you can understand your kids. Colour blindness is a recessive gene carried on the X chromosome. So to be colour blind, all your X chromosomes need to be affected. Men receive the X chromosome from their mothers and the Y from their fathers. So if their father isn't colour blind, but their mother is a carrier, there's a 50% chance they will receive the affected X chromosome. Women, on the other hand, receive one X from their mother and the other from their father. Again, there's a 50% chance they will receive the affected chromosomes, but because it's recessive, they will only be a carrier. If that woman now has a child with a colorblind man, the sons again will have a 50% chance of being affected, but the daughters will definitely be a carrier with a 50% chance of being colorblind themselves. If that colorblind daughter starts a family of her own with a non-colorblind man, all her sons will be colorblind and all her daughters just carriers. If she'd have had a family with a colorblind man though, it's tough look for any kids, they're all colorblind. The idea that women can't be colorblind is a myth. It's less likely as it has to affect all of your X chromosomes and women have two to play with, but it's still very possible. This is one of those myths that colorblind people get questioned about a lot, along with. Do you see only in black and white? No, only about one in 40,000 people do. So what color is that strawberry then? Red. Are you sure you're colorblind? Yes, but it's only certain shades. You're not colour blind then? No, it's a misnomer, but colour vision deficiency isn't catchy enough. What colour is that then? Green. Yeah, but are you lying? No. So does that mean that when you grow up you can't be a pilot or an astronaut? <sighs> what colour's that? Blue. No, it's purple. That's not a question. What else can't you see? Um, sometimes the grass looks orange. Why don't you just learn that the grass is green and call that shade of orange green? Good question. The retina has three types of cones for colour detection. The S cone detects light of short wavelengths, responsible for blues. The M cone, medium wavelengths, greens. And the L cone, long wavelengths, reds. When light enters the eye, it stimulates each cone, but cones are useless at identifying colours on their own. If an M cone receives 1000 photons, it doesn't know if it's looking at blue in bright light or green in low light. But with signals from the other two cones, the brain can use the ratio between the strengths to determine the colour. If the L cone also detects 700 photons and the S cone 10, the brain can work out that the grass it's looking at is probably green. This is how normal colour vision works. Three cones working perfectly, trichromacy. The most common type of colour blindness is anomalous trichromacy, where one of the cones is impaired. People with a dodgy L cone have protonomaly. The L cone is shifted towards the M. When incoming light is detected in this range, the difference between the two detected signals is much smaller, meaning the brain struggles to determine the exact colour. This is why I can sometimes see a specific green as orange, but not orange as green, making it impossible to learn your way around it. Due to anomaly is very similar, but the M cone is shifted towards the L. People with L and M cone problems have red-green colour blindness and can struggle with greens, yellows, oranges, reds and browns. But because of the red, this can also lead to confusion with purples and pinks. Tritonomaly is rare, but if you do have a dodgy S cone, you will struggle with blues and yellows. The other types of colour blindness are dichromacy, when an entire cone is missing. Protonopia, deuteranopia and tritonopia. However, dichromats are sometimes still able to correctly guess missing colours from environmental clues and luminance. Dogs are dichromats. The third type is extremely rare. When someone only has one cone, they are monochromatic. As a cone can't identify a colour without a second one for reference, monochromats see in black and white. Most people will have come across Ishihara tests, 
pattern of coloured dots that will create a number. Colourblind people won't see anything here, but someone with normal colour vision will see 74. If you're thinking, that's ridiculous, it clearly says 21, it's because Ishihara plates can work both ways. You, my friend, probably have due to anomaly. Sometimes, living with colour blindness can feel like the world is just cruel and other times it's completely unnoticeable. Where ordinary people differentiate with colour, colourblind people use situational clues without ever realising that's not what others do. It was years before I realised that 5 and 10 pound notes were different, or that word uses a different colour for grammar and spelling mistakes. Many video games have colourblind modes now, and people are starting to realise that 5% of the world can't read their map. Computers have apps to help distinguish confusing colours, and developers are slowly catching up. Everybody knows someone who's colourblind, so why doesn't everyone know what colourblindness is? Find that person in your life and speak to them about it. Don't ask them to identify colours, you wouldn't ask someone with a speech impediment to try a tongue twister, but you can tell them that peanut butter isn't green and watch their goddamn minds explode. Or you could buy them corrective glasses. These are a pretty new invention that blocks out specific wavelengths where the cones overlap, forcing the brain to see difficult colours as more vibrant than before. I've got a pair on their way, so subscribe to see my next video where I'll explain how they work and my reaction to trying them for the first time. <laughs> wow. I am actually, I'm actually crying. This is unreal. <laughs> Those are like really strong. <laughs> I feel like I've been seeing hazy my whole life. <laughs> it's so beautiful.